Phillips. I'm here with at the Autodesk booth at SIGGRAPH 2014. And I'm here with Pablo Herman, who's from ILM. He's a supervisor there. And we're going to be talking about a movie that is just releasing, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I think uh, you guys have probably seen some previews online of the, the new look and feel of the turtles. Uh, but thanks again for coming out. Um, no problem. Thank you. Unfortunately, I have not yet had a chance to see this movie, thanks to Zagraf. Uh, so this is going to be my preview run on it's this okay, whole because we just finished it <laughs> about a week ago or something like that. Yeah, we were just talking earlier about the, the, the difference in the world these days where you can actually have VFX and animation finishing a movie, and the movie goes out literally like five or six days later, it seems. Yeah, I think, I, I think the idea is that uh, you want to make the best movie you can possibly make. And so the decisions get pushed and pushed and pushed until you can't push them anymore. <laughs> Officially, theaters are waiting now. It has to go out at this point. <laughs> yeah. So I guess one of the questions that I always like to ask in these interviews is, when you first find out this is the movie I'm making, I'm making TMNT, what, was, what were your first concerns? What was the first, like, oh, gee, uh, what do I do? Well, the thing about it is I'm, I'm, a, little, I'm a little too old for what it was. So, uh, you know, I was aware of it. And so the first thing I did is just Google you know, Ninja Turtles. And oh, all of a sudden you get, like, thousands of images uh, and then you start taking a look at it and you realize that there's a there's a lot of mythology behind uh, the franchise and be, be, behind the characters and uh, you know having been part of several franchises I can tell you that you will never be right you know, for everybody because you're you're basically fighting with uh, the memories of having you know, all these people having been um, you know, exposed to that specific yeah. franchise. Playing with your childhoods, basically. Yeah, yeah, so you, you, you can never... So, basically, you have to be really, really careful and take a look at what the spirit of the franchise is. And being that this is coming from the comics, uh, you know, book, um, in which everything is, like, um, bent on a one frame. And you, when that one frame, you just tell a story, and then you move on to the next frame, and then you tell a different story. We, uh, we are talking to Michael Bay and Jonathan Lewis, and the idea was to make this as photorealistic as possible. And to do that, uh, they need to be animated, and you know that the animation comes from the eyes, from the eyebrows, from the forehead, from the nose, a lot of nostril stuff, and then from the mouth. Uh, so you know that if you have a mouth that goes from cheek to cheek, and you need some specific phonemes like F and, and, uh, and, uh, and THs and things like that, uh, you have to be able to um, design it so that it doesn't look like a puppet. So like for instance, you know, these, these kind of designs are um, just done exactly for that. So you can see that the face is, is done so that the mouth can actually iterate different phonemes yeah. and that uh, if you're saying that the animation comes from all these different parts of the, the face, already 50% of the face is already taken out because I can't, I can't do anything. Just imagine somebody without eyebrows. Yeah, exactly. And so you have to be able to emote. And to do that, you have to make uh, some design decisions that have to do with uh, you know, how are they going to move. And if you have a character like Donatello that has a mouth you know, they're a little bit bigger than ours, and, and uh, the proportions are not exactly human. Uh, you also um, have to be able to, uh, to, uh, to put some of the original characters into, uh, into each one of the designs, so that the four turtles are completely different from each other, and, and each of them have enough uh, richness in terms of the details so that you can differentiate them. Um, so that, that would be the, 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 that, that's some of the things that I'm thinking about. Uh, I meet with the director, I meet with the producers, and we talk a little bit about what the, um, you know, how the movie is going to be made. Mm -hmm. And the first thing that I think about is the fact that we want to make, uh, we want to have four actors on the set. And, to do, and we want to capture the, uh, the motion, and we want to capture the performance. And to do that, we need, um, for great actors that uh, have great chemistry together and that um, we uh, put on them a, a device so that we can capture their performances. What we came up with is uh, we work with video hawks to come up with a helmet that has two HD cameras uh, left and right 
so that we can uh, solve some of the uh, you know some of the animation that happens on the edge of the, uh, right. the eyes and the, and the jaws and the uh, the, uh, the edge of the mouth. Uh, so the uh, the actors are wearing that, and they have 138 markers, um, and we have a kind of a footprint of about 14 people on the set uh, recording those performances. And you can see that uh, the set is a very it's a very hectic place uh, where there there's technicians you know capturing that performance uh, throughout the 15 hours. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of data. There's terabytes of data. Yeah, uh, so in, between in, witness cameras, actual material. It's yes, it's it's a lot of stuff. Uh, the other thing that we capture uh, besides the face was the body performance, right. and then we came up with a different suit here that uh, basically the computer uh, takes a look at uh, patterns, and uh, and we put uh, specific fiducias. Uh, you know, in the back of the shells and throughout the uh, the body, so that the computer knows which turtle is which. Okay, gotcha. Because they, they follow them look exactly the same. So is it? It's it's literally extrapolating based on the patterns. What I'm seeing here yes. is there. So it's not like the usual like a bunch of ping pong balls kind of stuck to. A, no, a no, no. There's no ping pong balls here. There are two witness cameras mm -hmm. that are basically triangulating where these people are uh, on the set. So this is a set. This is a system that it was taken on location. Uh, and then there's a face performance that comes with it. So you have a lot of data that gets that gets put together. Um, and then um, you have some examples here of uh, some of the final shots and some of the on-set performances. And the whole, the whole system, this whole system that we put together has to do with scientifically capturing the data and scientifically retargeting that data onto a digital asset but then bringing in an animator to reinterpret that data so that uh, the performance is totally enough. So, so when, you, when you say you're bringing in the data kind of scientifically, what do you mean when you're saying that? What, what's different than, say, what someone else would normally do? I think what's different is that we're capturing two cameras in left and right, so we're doing a 3D solve. Uh, but the 3D solve, um, it's interesting because the 3D solve has to be um, has to be something that has to be solved in a way that the animators would solve it. Right. So it's a little bit of uh, you know AI, you know uh, artificial intelligence right there that says, uh, okay, I need to solve this performance through you know 50 different sliders and uh, and and all this. Not uh, just Maya. physically moving a point. No, no, no. In a way, so that the so that when the data is passed to the animator, it's completely understandable. And, and let me just point out that this is not a system that uh, basically solves the data and then gives it to the, uh, cans the data and gives it to the animator. This is a system in which um, the, uh, the, the, all the, the, the Maya curves are kept alive mm -hmm. and uh, the, the animators work on the curves themselves, not on a different layer later on. So I think the, the, the thing for people to understand then is when you look at what, say, a traditional mocap, facial mocap system is, is you have a hundred and some odd points in the face, the animator would get the ugly duty of dealing with a hundred and some odd sets of curves each for right. each point. And what you're giving them though is like, no, no, in order for that character to smile, the computer actually drove the sliders and controls that the animator would drive to make that smile happen. Yes, and it's really important that the computer does that thing right, because if it doesn't, when you move a slider, when you move a curve, then you go off model. And then you end up with you know not being able to solve that. Um, I think um, also the idea was to, to have the animators have access of the, you know, of the the raw data, so that you are not handing them a cooked, you know, solve, and then on top of that, you're animating through shades and doing some kind of stretching. Animating. Yeah, kind of animating stuff. And I think that the idea was that because of this performance, this uh, movie uh, was going to have all kinds of performances and it was going to be very funny. We wanted to have that uh, access, uh, give that access to the animators. I don't think it'd be even also important just from the fact that again you've got obviously human faces trying to act at some very distorted yes. proportions. You'd be you'd be surprised. I think uh, you know they might look like they're very human, but they're not. You know their eyes are separated more, their mouths are bigger, they have uh, different teeth, uh, the noses are different. Uh, they have all kinds of, um, you know, uh, 
weight differences. So right. because these turtles are about 350, 400 pounds, they move differently, and all that stuff is going to have to be, uh, you know, put in uh, through the performance. Right. And so much of that then does fall to the animator that's now trying to interpret the mod it, the change. It it does. Uh, it's kind of an interesting thing. I think filmmaking is one of the you know, a few things that are left where a collaboration is the name of the game. If you don't collaborate, you ain't got a movie. So, uh, so the idea that there is an actor that is uh, coming up with a performance is making some choices in terms of timing, emotions, you know, a bunch of di uh, tone, you know, a bunch of different things. And then the animators come in and put their, you know, artistry into it. And uh, for, you know, that, that performance into something that is, uh, that is, um, attainable and, and, and something that is that people will like, I think is really good. Very much. So. Why don't we take a look at that final uh, shot that we were looking at earlier there. All right. I think that was a, a cool one to pay attention to here for a second. So how did this little piece this, come apart? This shot came about um, the fact that <laughs> we needed a shot to get the turtles you know, from the bottom of the Condinance building in New York to the 54th floor. And there was no actually uh, provision in the script for it. So we were there waiting for uh, Danny Woodburn, to, uh, who plays the rap, to come into the, uh, the volume stage. And uh, we said, you know what, we need that piece. You know, why don't we you know, come up with something really wacky, like you guys are in an elevator. Just imagine the turtles being in an elevator and come up with some kind of a rap. And I have seen them do this in New York. Uh, off stage because they, they had a lot of chemistry together. So they did one take, uh, really wacky stuff. Um, they had a lot of fun, and I think we all did. Um, I think it's also this this thing contributes to, to the to the tone of the movie, and also uh, it says a lot about the size. I know that there's a lot of talk about the size mm -hmm. of the of the turtles, but the, 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 the reality, well, the reality of these turtles is that. They are four creatures that uh, have been wrong, you know, right. and, and they don't feel comfortable with who they are. And, uh, and I think we all feel that way a little bit. And I think that the bigger they are, the more uh, awkward for them to be in because they are in a world that is not made for them. Right, exactly. Well, I have to say, it actually looks really good. I, I'm always dubious every time one of these childhood <laughs> things kind of gets uh, resurrected. Yeah. And I know TMNT in particular has been kind of resurrected a few times over yes. the years. And I, I actually do like the, the, the look of the turtles and kind of the feel that they have. So I'm looking forward to seeing this. So thanks again, Pablo, for coming out and uh, talking to us about it. Again, go check out the movie. And otherwise, uh, thank you very much, everybody.